Well, here we are again, folks. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. And I want to do a little reading tonight. We're in uh, chapter 6 of Luke. And this is a story that's worth repeating any time you open the Bible. Uh, it's good to read over and over some stories. And this is one story I particularly like. And it's when Jesus really tested the people. He said, It came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was wizard. By the way, on the Sabbath, Jesus always entered into the synagogue. This was the third time in a row, a third week in a row that he had entered into the synagogue. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an occasion against him. He was always being watched. And I'm going to tell you this. Jesus said, if you follow me, you will have persecution. There's going to be a group out there watching you. If you're going to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's going to be a group of people watching you all the time. And they're going to try their best to catch you up. So you better be on your best spiritual behavior if you can. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man, which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Jesus didn't do anything hidden or under the covers or anywhere. He did it right in the public. So he stuck the man right out there. He said, Get up and stand in front of these men. And that's what he did. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good or to do evil? to save life or to destroy it. He put a conundrum to them that they couldn't answer. No matter which way they answered it, they would have been wrong. So the only thing they could do is shake their heads and walk away. And uh, looking around about upon them all, he said unto the men, Stretch forth thine hand, and he did. So when his hand was restored whole as the other, it was immediate. Jesus just had to speak it and that was the end of it and his hand was there and verse 11 it said and they were filled with madness those scribes and pharisees and they communed one with another and they might do to jesus they wanted to see what they might do to jesus they're communing with each other saying what are we going to do with this guy? He, he, we can't defeat him. We can't seem to defeat him. He, he defeats us every way we turn. Uh, and it came to pass in those days that he went out in the mountain to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. This is Jesus now, the one that died on the cross and saved us, prayed all night to his Father, and and he prayed for these people. I'm sure he was praying uh, for all those that had been healed, he was praying for all those who were going to be healed. He was praying for all the people that were going to be saved. He also was praying for the scribes and Pharisees. And and when it uh, was day, he called unto him his disciples. Uh, of them he chose twelve, who also their names he named apostles. Now, Jesus had a lot of disciples. He had a lot of followers. There was a bunch of followers there. And those followers were uh, followers, but then he picked out 12 to be specific disciples. Now, listen to who they were. They were Simon, whose surname was Peter, and there was Andrew, which was Simon, or Peter's brother. And there was James and John, Philip and Bartholomew. There was Matthew, and there was Thomas. There was James, the son of Alphaeus, also Simon, called Zelotes. Uh and then uh, then there was Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot. There were two Judases in that group, which also was the traitor. Judas the Iscariot was the traitor. And he came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of his disciples on a great multitude of people out of Judea and out of Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and they were that were vexed 
with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for they went virtue out of him and healed them all. Now this was a man, when he walked up, all they had to do was touch him. Actually, the truth of the matter is, as many of them, all they had to do is believe that what he said was the truth and accept it, and they got that virtue without the touch. No, it didn't say anything about him touching the man with a withered hand. He just spoke it out, and the man was healed. He didn't say, uh, the girl, the lady came to him and said, my daughter is uh, dying, and he just spoke it. And several incidences where Jesus just spoke, and it happened. It said he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said unto them, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of men's sake. And uh, so we go on now. Rejoice ye in the day and keep for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For the like manner did their fathers undo their prophets. But woe unto you, that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are filled, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that uh, laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak uh, well of you, for so did they their fathers to the false prophets. Okay. And uh, so uh, what he was saying here, he's telling these uh, disciples these things that were to come about and about other people. And he was saying that, that you're going to meet all these classes of people. And when you do, then you're going to uh, know them. He said, but I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which deceitfully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer also the other. And him that uh, taketh away thy cloak, forbid not uh, to take thy coat also. What he's saying is, do good to them to spitefully use you. It's hard to do that sometimes. It's hard to be good to somebody that's despitefully using you. He said, Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that uh, taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. If a man takes away your goods, don't ask him again. Don't ask him back. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. In other words, he's saying, do good to everybody first. Don't wait for them to do good to you and then do good to them, trying to repay a reward for a reward. But go ahead and do it first. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. Well, you know, it's pretty easy to love a person that loves you. But it's pretty hard to love a person that doesn't love you. This very year, I had a man that's he's, he's running around town doing me pretty bad. He thinks I did him bad, but I didn't. I paid him his due. He got his money. He got his due. And uh, now he's making it hard. He said, if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank ye, what have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners, 